Good evening. It's yeah. Monday. It is Monday. It's Good evening. Doug and Janet Newberry. There is great hope. Hi, folks. Back in the truck. We are back in the truck and we didn't want to be. We've tried and tried and tried. And I'm going to try to tag you again in this video. Let's see what happens. There we go. How easy is that? Well, there is. we go. Okay, We're good. That was easier than maybe not. I don't know. Why won't you go away? Okay. So um, we're back in the truck because this time of year in this part of the country, the locust at this time of evening, I guess we could learn something from that too. The locusts just start screaming. We and went so, to this <laughs> really quiet little park with this giant oak tree. It was a perfect setting. It was great. And the locusts were screaming in the background. And then I had this idea to drive to the Fredericksburg herb farm, which we're sitting in the parking lot right now. <laughs> and I'm going to even just try to do this. This may be a mistake, but I'm going to just show you the gorgeous place that we could be doing this Facebook live in right outside the truck window and we would have to scream over the locusts. Yeah. And so here we are. In We're the not truck. screamers. In the truck. We didn't want you to have to listen to the locusts and behind us. So um, Fredericksburg, Texas. Yep. Still inhabitable here. One of our favorite places. Yes. And uh, about to go to Baton Rouge. Yeah, we're driving to Baton Rouge. We're not pulling Freedom the Airstream, but we're driving to Baton Rouge this weekend. We have um, um, my son and his wife and our newest grandbaby is there. We're going to play with them, and we're very excited that I'm going to be sharing at Grace Life Fellowship. I'm um, going to be talking to their preschool teachers, talking to their kids' ministry volunteers and their and the, youth ministry, and, and then the doing, doing a, yeah. a Sunday night um, sharing with their parents and so I'm excited about doing that it's fun partnering with Grace Life Fellowship um, They're so new people. if you um, didn't know that I did speaking engagements check out the speaker page on JanetNewberry.com as we love doing yes, that especially do. when it hooks up with our travel it's it's fun for um, everybody yeah yeah all right so tonight's part three of mm -hmm. uh, Family Life by Design, Not Default, Untangling Entitlement Part 3. And it's Part 3, but it could be Part 100. Yeah, there's just, <laughs> it's just such Probably a deep topic. Probably the last one for, yeah. a, for a while. But. Yeah, uh, and for no other reason, just to move on into some other things. But it's such a, uh, the whole entitlement thing within a family and within uh, uh, children and within work within life itself is just you could run in a hundred different ways but hey steve mason hi uh, steve but tonight we're going to focus pretty much on the family life by yeah. design not default um because we've talked if you haven't watched part one or part two you can see them on the youtube channel janet newberry youtube channel you can find part one and part two which talks about the history of the use of the word and um, some of the stories that got us to this place in our history where we're struggling with this idea of doing less and demanding more. And I'm going to read you the definition that we started with okay, for entitlement. Here's what we're referring to. And this is a powerful definition. There's some key words in here. When demands and expectations define the relationship instead of my true identity and personal responsibility. Entitlement is when I want to do less or get more. So the whole idea of identity and responsibility. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll see you later. Have fun at band practice, Steve. Um, the identity, the idea that identity and responsibility are woven together. And we've done a weird thing with that weaving and it's tangled up our stories in entitlement. And um, the takeaways from last time. Yeah, let's just review those real quick. It's The first one was disconnect struggle from shame, not from personal responsibility. Real responsibility comes from living in our true identity. Those, because those yeah. two things are together. And so we want in the healthy relationships to disconnect struggle from shame, but not from personal responsibility. And the second takeaway from part two, um, just to transition into part three is by design, we are contributors. By default, we're consumers. 
We are created to respond, be first responders, not earn in relationship. Right. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one, transactions put joy, happiness, contentment in the future when I get. Transformational relationships remind me that I have what I need. I already have it. I have it now. Yes, we have each other. We have a new identity in Christ. We have the love of God and we have the Holy Spirit. And so we have what we need. And anything we're working to earn in the future is going to be addictive if it's not um, part of living a whole and healthy um, life in relationship. Right. And so today we're kind of going to unpack what does that whole and healthy life look like because there's a whole new life cycle outside of entitlement. Yeah, by design we have work leisure, rest, fun, in transformational relationships. All right, so you said that so casually. Say it again like it's a big announcement because it okay, is a big announcement. a big announcement. <laughs> here is a big here's announcement. A, by design, we have work, leisure, rest, and fun in transformational relationships. I do because I am, and I do because I care yes. about doing something. In, by default, work is a bad word. But by design, we're created to enjoy work. It's part of who we are. I, yep. We were, I mean, we're created in the image of God. He's a worker. We are workers. And it's not a, it's not something that was placed on us as a punishment. Yeah, sin. as a punishment. It's no, just, it's what we're created to do. Yeah, we're doers. We, we uh, create things. And this got tangled up when we were on a walk this morning <laughs> and um, we were kind of hashing around these ideas and wrestling with it. And this idea came to us, you know, when you go to the carnival and you play that thing where you get that giant hammer and you ring the bell and you try to ring the bell and get the prize, right? Outside of our perfect design, that's what it feels like. That's what work feels like is that I'm going to, every day I have to get a bigger hammer and ring the bell and somebody's going to hand me a prize and that's what we've reduced work to outside of our design and um, there's no deep satisfaction there. And so both sides, the person handing out the prize, which in our homes is often the parents, yeah. right? Um, feels like they're getting the raw end of a bad negotiating deal. The person who's swinging the hammer, who's doing the chore to get the sticker, or in our adult lives, who's um, meeting the standard to get the bonus, right? right. Um, so we feel like we're in the raw end of a negotiation deal because in transformational relationships we do because we are, we do because we care, and in transactional relationships we do to earn something that's supposed to be satisfying but it's not. Right. Because the work in and of itself is supposed to be who we are. And so here's another idea about that ringing that bell. When we work, because we are part of healthy relationships and healthy communities and healthy families, we work and we learn how to engage in, a, in the world around us, right? Whether it's how to respond to a sink full of dirty dishes, right? There's a first responder for you, <laughs> right? How to respond to um, a mess in your room, how to respond to your homework, how to respond to your family when everybody's in chaos, right? If we can learn how to respond and we learn how to wash dishes, if we can learn how to respond to a yard where the grass is too tall, right? All of these ways of working and responding um, are deeply satisfying to us. And guess what we're going to figure out one day? We're going to figure out after we've responded to hungry people around us that we love to cook. Or we're going to find out when we're mowing the grass that we love to garden. When I, when I, we, before we lived in an airstream, I had a yard. I used to love to make the yard look beautiful, restore it back to its beauty. I really didn't care for the whole act of mowing, but I, it was part of the trans, transformation, transformation of, of, 
of something that needed care and turning it into something that I really enjoyed and yeah. it was deeply satisfying. And when work is transformational, when you're transforming the yard, when you're transforming the kitchen, when you're having an impact and influence on people because you're um, helping them when they're hurting, you're feeding them when they're hungry, work is deeply satisfying and you find out what rings your bell. Right? You find out what you're wired for. I'm wired to um, to work in the food industry. I'm wor um, wired to, to work to, in, to, to serve in some other way. I'm wired to work as a landscaper. I'm wired to work um, as a writer or a painter or an artist. And so when we detach, I do in order to get when we get to do because we who we are and because we care in relationships and we uh, and others do for us because they care for us in relationship and we begin to experience the transformation that happens when we're not always doing to get and working to earn deep satisfaction happens right and we get to figure out what we're wired for which is always something bigger than ourselves and it's always deeply satisfying always. always so okay so that is the by the design so by design here's what we get to wake up and do every day by design we get to work we get to enjoy leisure we get to rest and we get to have fun Right? Should we distinguish a yeah. little bit about what leisure is? Yeah, because it's not laying on the couch eating, you know. Right. Leisure, we got to redeem that word. We got to redeem the word work in our culture, but we need to redeem the word leisure too because leisure is different than entertainment. Leisure is transformational. Entertainment is numbing. All right? I'm not saying entertainment is evil. Put it in the fun category every now and then, right? <laughs> Sugar isn't evil either, but too much <laughs> is is transforming in a bad way right so, so leisure a good example of leisure would be fishing photography photography um, going on a walk gardening um, if you're as old as we are think back of when you were a little child little when I was a little girl and I went to my grandparents house they spent a lot of time with leisure activities we went fishing we went my grandfather went on a walk both all of my grandparents had a garden and worked in the yard a great deal my grandmothers cooked they made like chow chow and gumbo and you know that was even a leisure activity they would the um, guys would go hunting together and have great conversations fishing. outside yeah um, and so leisure is different than sports and leisure is different. Leisure is a time they get to engage in conversation or you get to be quiet and listen um, and to nature and to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Um, you just get to wrestle with the ideas and the big picture of life. And so that's part of the life by design cycle is work, leisure, rest, and fun. Talk about rest. Rest I mean, is it's it's an absolute necessity. We, we do work and we do spend energy in doing so, and so you've got to restore. Leisure is one way to walk you back towards that. Rest is is a requirement. Okay. It's it's what our bodies need. Right. Entitlement doesn't exist in this transformational life cycle, this life that we're created to live by design, where we're working, um, we're enjoying leisure and rest, and we're having fun too. That's one of the reasons why we like Fredericksburg. When we first met each other about seven years ago, and we, be, we were wrestling with the life cycle that we oh, yeah. were recovering from. We didn't know what fun was. <laughs> we did it. We literally we sat on no the couch clue. one night and we said, what do we do for fun? Because we knew how to, we knew how to perform and we knew how to hide in pain relief. And which, I could jump through hoops. Right. But we didn't know what to do for fun. And it's one of the reasons we love Fredericksburg is because there's things to do for fun here. Yeah. You can hike and you can go to great restaurants and you can look at beautiful art, hear live music. And yeah. you can, yeah, there's art galleries and all those kinds of things that are fun. And for us, the Astros are fun. Yeah. Baseball is fun, right? Um, so I just gave, I just 
said in the middle of that story when I was saying when we didn't know what fun was, I said we knew how to perform and we knew how to jump through hoops and by default, there's our other options. Yeah, this is the other side of the coin. This is... Uh, this is the transactional life cycle. Right. This is the default, all right? By default, life isn't work, leisure, rest, and fun. By default, life becomes about performing. And because I've spent all of my time performing and everything is a transactional relationship, I do to get, even in relationship with you, yes. it's all about manipulation. If you do this, I'll do that, right? It's not about I do because I am or do because I love or do because I care. It's I'm, right. we're counting. Life is a ledger, right? And so we're performing and we're hurting because yeah. we've been performing all day. And you're worn out. And when you come home, what do you do? Not you, leisure. No, you don't do leisure. And so you start looking for, how do I get over this? These performance yeah, injuries. Yeah, and they are performance injuries. Right, really. over performance injuries. And so you engage in pain relief. You numb out on either a screen. Mm -hmm. uh, a computer game. Alcohol. Food, food yeah. right? You so it's a performance pain relief hide. Um, you can even hide in entertainment. I'm not saying entertainment is e is evil, but it's not a place to recover and to rest. And it's not always a fun place. It's sometimes a hiding place. And so there's the life cycle, the transactional default life cycle. And in default, you won't find deep satisfaction. You'll Never. find some entertainment, it's short-lived, and like, yeah, that'll get me over the next hump, but it's not deeply satisfying. And instead, it's addictive. Anything that we're not created for is addictive by design. We're going to need more of it because we weren't created to be satisfied with it. Right. And so, um, entitlement, we're talking about untangling entitlement. Entitlement is the fruit of relationships by default. This whole perform pain relief, I'll do and I'll get, and if you do, you'll get kind of relationship. And there's no recovery. Yeah, there's no recovery, there's no satisfaction, there's no maturity, and there's no contribution. All of the things that we're created to experience we don't experience in, ent in entitlement transactional relationships. So that's the default road. Right, but life is the fruit of relationships by design. When the I do because I am and I do because I care and so there is recovery. There's there, maturity. There's deep satisfaction right. and there's great contribution. In fact, here's the odd thing that you wouldn't think would happen, but it's by design, so it's a miracle. Because in these transaction relationships and in the definition of entitlement, we want to do less and get more, all right? Because we're not deeply satisfied. We're doing to get and we're not deeply satisfied because right. it's not the way we're designed to work, but we have some of us, we are still figuring that out, right? And so we think we're just getting the raw end of a negotiating deal. And so we think, well, I'll feel better if I do less and get more because that's bound to be deeply satisfying. But guess what? The other person is thinking the same thing. They're thinking, I'm going to give less and ask for more. And right. so everybody pulls back from contribution. I'm going to contribute less until you give me more. Well, guess what? You're going to contribute less until I give you more. And so by default, we end up in entitlement. Yeah, it's, it's going back to the carnival analogy where the guy's <clears throat> ringing the bell, swinging the hammer, and somebody and else is taking the prize. And, and the wondering guy's why the prize isn't yeah. deeply satisfying. Yeah. Right? And it's so, not deeply satisfying to anybody. It may be fun for a moment, but not as a daily routine. Yeah, and translate that back into your family. You can, it, you can see the picture and where we're going with that. But it was, um, if, it's, if it's by default, it's not going to be deeply satisfying. If it's by design, it will always be deeply satisfying. And here's the reality. We know that there is much of life that operates by default, where we have to work to earn, 
right? Yes. But it doesn't have to happen in our homes it and families. It doesn't have to be our homes. It doesn't have to happen in our homes and families. Home can be the place that of that safe and a place where it's safe to contribute. Home can be the safe where it, uh, the place where it's safe to be loved and to be vulnerable and to recover from yes. what's hap what's happened in your day. Be in a safe place to come home and be. Um, in conversation with those people that love you and trust and you trust and uh, to care for you yeah. and here's the beautiful thing that happens when home is the safe place to work and enjoy leisure and enjoy rest and recovery and enjoy fun when home is that safe place home begins to be the safe place to risk too and to and risk leads to creativity and creativity leads to greater contribution and greater contribution leads to greater satisfaction and life begins to work by design instead of continually getting hijacked by default in all the ways that we live in transactional relationships and it's habit it's habits. You and build new habits. You build new habits with the people in your own home. We have a sign hanging over our bed in our Airstream. Um, we have to take it down whenever we move so it doesn't fall. But I actually bought it here in Fredericksburg. And it, I love the simple words. It says, at, at home, find comfort and rest. Because restoration happens when we get to behave as who we really are. We get to have our needs met by other people who contribute in relationship because they care. And we get to meet other people's needs and life begins to be bigger than ourselves and we begin to experience deep satisfaction and guess what maturity happens and more mature people get to contribute more and experience more deep satisfaction so you know the the summary of my love research is that if you aim at the target of performance a work standard your maturity is always going to suffer right. but if you aim at maturity which means if you um, are loved well and you love others well if you aim at those transformational relationships performance is going to go off the charts Every contribution time. is going to yeah. go off the charts that is the freedom of life by design so let's leave you with three yeah, takeaways let's give them something to take away yeah no, uh, number one by design we are created to find our deepest satisfaction by contributing rather than consuming. That just needs to be a news flash. We can sit on that one yeah. for a bit. Yeah, we're contributors, not consumers. There's our satisfaction. Good news. Yeah. Takeaway number two for tonight, by design, struggle is a place we are created to connect and find love instead of disconnect because we're afraid. Because when we live in the work um, the perform pain relief cycle struggle is a bad news yeah. because if I've got to do to get and struggle makes it hard to do which means I'm not gonna get struggle is is bad news but struggle is not is not shameful is not something to be afraid of in transformational relationships struggle means ask for help because they're safe and people yeah and struggle is where growth takes place yes we have to struggle to grow up and we're with people who will love us and meet our needs and so by design struggle is a place where we are created to connect and find love instead of disconnect because we're afraid yeah uh, the last one number three by design our homes are created to be safe places of work leisure rest and fun that's a yeah. life we are created to live and if you want to um, find out more, I have my Brave Love t-shirt on. It's probably backwards on Facebook Live. But I, um, if you want to find out more and engage in more of these conversations, look on iTunes for our Brave Love podcast. Yeah. And also uh, go to JanetNewberry.com. We have these kind of conversations in our online classes every day. And it's uh, a safe place to be vulnerable 
uh, with our closed uh, Facebook group. Yes, it's called and At the Table, and we have transformational relationships there, not transactional ones. And it's people from all around the world. Yeah, and it's a it's, safe place to struggle. It's a safe place to um, experience love and be loved and love on others who are struggling. And so look on the JanetNewberry.com page and find our online classes. Um, right. There's many courses. There's Big Bites. Um, and if you're wondering which one to start, with send us an email janet yeah. at janet newberry.com but um who knows where we'll be re facebook living from yeah. next monday night and uh, maybe the locusts <laughs> will be quiet and we won't have to record in the truck and we can actually sit in the beautiful garden that's just right outside this truck window but we're really close to having absolutely beautiful perfect weather here and i hope we're here when it hits yeah so anyway so enjoy wherever you are and we will um and if you're catching up on part one and part two of this entitlement series go to janet newberry on youtube yeah thank you guys so much for joining us tonight good night there yeah. is great hope there is great hope